December 21st, 2018, Scott Insert, 10 Foil Hat Club. Tonight, Grace, and I want you to stick around and hear what we have to say tonight. First time guest, Penny, is going to join us on this. This is involving grace and faith and belief and belief in Jesus Christ. And, and this world is a very, very bad place. We're in, a, we're in circumstances that we are warned about in Scripture. The day is here. The day for those things of revelation is coming. Now, this is nothing to fear about. We are in Christ. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And so as we go through this tonight uh, with her testimony and this information that she'd like to bring out, try and put yourself in her shoes. And I know that many of you that are targeted individuals and, and those I've prayed for in the past and I've done deliverance on, that uh, once you get rid of the fear demons, understand exactly who Jesus Christ is and what is really going on, you're no longer in fear. And because of this, this brings a strength, this brings a faith, this brings the ability to stand against the wiles of the enemy. And in order to bring this to the public eye, to get it to, to people who need to hear this message, we need to be up front and talk about that. So understand, too, that as we go through it, um, there's going to be some things that uh, either touch you or they don't. In either case, uh, she's here to, to, uh, to let us know. Now, last week, uh, I was on the road. I was taking um, Pat back to the airport. Uh, I no longer live in the Reno area. I'm out in the remote desert, so it's quite a round trip for me. And by the time I got back, I just didn't have time to prepare the show. And so last week's show, but the show that he was on the week before that was Ghost Cities. And that uh, was quite a, a show that uh, kind of rang the bell for a lot of people. And there was a lot of feedback. Now, I want to address a comment that was on YouTube. And I believe it was under Human Devils, the one the show that I had done. And the comment basically was stating that I was full of BS and that I have no videos on exorcism. Well, actually, I do have videos of exorcisms that I've done that have been many, many years ago. And one of the reasons I do not post these videos is how would you like the whole world to see the demons manifest in you, snarling, spitting, yelling, screaming, your eyes roll back in your head, throwing up? Well, that is not a pretty sight. And I work very hard to keep, when I, when I pray for you and when I take notes, and by the way, all notes that I take when I'm interviewing you and I do a deliverance, I destroy. There is nothing of accountability whatsoever because once this is done, Paul tells us not to look back. What is done is done. You've confessed your sins. You've repented. You've renounced. It's time to get the bad boys out. They're out of you, and you are no longer under that curse. You're no longer under that sin or guided by that sin. You are a new creation in Christ. And so the documentation of videos, if they're posted in public, can be used against you later. You get into a new relationship, you get a, a job, you know, your dream job, and someone digs one of these things up, and there you are, snarling, snarling, you know, spitting, growling, and everything else. It doesn't go over well. And there's also been controversy in some of the past uh, ministries that I've been in where training videos were, were made by the very people that were deliverance, uh, uh, being trained to be deliverance ministers. And in time, when you know a year goes by or two years goes by, who wants that stuff out there? And so there's been threats of lawsuits to surrender those videos and destroy them, and it just isn't worth it. So I'm going to ask the individual who posted that comment that would you please call me, email me, that's available, so I can have you come to my studio, to my ministry, to my office, and I'll run the video camera, and I will do a deliverance, a exorcism on you, and as the demons manifest, I'm going to taunt them, I'm going to smack them, I'm going to do what I do best, and that is interrogate, and then we're going to post that video. So what I'm saying to the individual that made the comment, how would you like that? And so privacy is number one, because again, when you are a new creation in Christ, this is the last thing you want the world to see. 
is who you were once, not who you are now. So that is very important, and that is why I do not do videos. Now, Bob Larson, I started out with him almost 20 years ago. I was one of his Doing What Jesus Did team, and he makes no bones about videotaping people. We get the conferences and then posting and being in part of his documentary or the videos that he sells. And so for 25 plus years, there are videos available of people from those times back uh, that are manifesting the demons and so forth. And I feel bad for them because again, you know, th this is something that, um, that not everybody wants. And so uh, it's forever documented this behavior or the type of uh, situations with demons. And I, I just, uh, I won't do that. I will never do that. And one video that I do have was from a very, very long time ago. I use it as a training in private and it is uh, never going to be released out. And again, that's, uh, that's the preference that I stand by. So when it comes to deliverance, when it comes to exorcism, we need to understand that the enemy is, is, a, is a formidable enemy, but the gates of hell will not prevail against the church of Jesus Christ. And who is the church? That's you and me, not the building down the road, not that congregation that pretends to have uh, faith or that they are predestined or that they are going to be pre-raptured or whatever. It's those who stand in their works. Now, you are not saved by works, but understand that in the commandments of Jesus Christ, Matthew 28, we have a job to do. And so uh, Penny has uh, made a decision in her life who she's going to serve. Those things that were put upon her uh, to, to sway her uh, out because, you know, God knows all things, omnipresent, all-knowing, omnipotent. And the future he knows. We know that through prophecy. We know that through the book of Revelation. And so he knows our destiny. But unfortunately, the spirit world does too. And the spirit world does not have our best interest in mind. And that means that those who are called, those who have answered the call that say, yes, I believe in Jesus Christ, your, your life can really be under a great stress because one, the church doesn't do deliverance. And so your generational curses and the sins that have followed you into your uh, walk with Christ still hammer you. And the demons have legal rights because you haven't taught to repent. You haven't taught to renounce. You haven't taught to break. And you didn't get the demons out. You didn't get, get the curses broke off. And so you're beat up. But unfortunately for the demons, they are not going to win. As we get closer towards these times, those who are still in the faith, those who are called and answer the call are here uh, to, to fight and just, you know, when, when Jesus Christ returns, this will be an, a forever change. And this change, can you imagine spending eternity with Christ, spending eternity in, in God's kingdom and the heavens? And, you know, there'll be a new heaven and a new earth, regardless of what you think about Zionism and all that other stuff. This is a time to understand who you are in Christ, Christ Jesus. And so with that, um, as uh, I bring her on here, uh, I'm looking forward to which way the Holy Spirit brings this. And she has asked me to pray uh, before uh, we get going, and that's what I'm going to do. So Penny, I'm going to bring you on right now. And uh, so thank you for joining me tonight. And I know that this is probably one of your first times doing this. And so just relax, you know, uh, God's here. The Holy Spirit's here, and we'll, we'll go in the direction. Now, I'm also feeling some things here, and so um, let me pray for you, and let's also uh, keep in mind that those in the audience yeah. listening need prayer as well. And so uh, may I pray for you, Penny? Absolutely. Okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, notice that I asked. It's very important to have uh, the one that you pray for in agreement. Two or more are gathered. That means you're in agreement before Jesus Christ. And in that, uh, again, the Holy Spirit is able to be released. Yes? Did you have something to say before we go? Start uh, talking, praying here? No, I, I just, 
I'm so happy that you are doing the show, and I am so happy that you asked me to be on the show. That's okay. all I can say. Okay. All right, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, anything that is an assignment to, to hinder, to block, to stop us from tonight, I stand against it. I take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and I take it and I cut it and I slice it. I, I bring it to no effect. And in the name of Jesus Christ, as we stand in the faith and the belief and the understanding of who we are in Christ, and we ask for your holy angels now to encamp around us, to battle the spirit realm. And as we put on the full armor of God, as we move forward in that faith, in the belief that in this, in the name of Jesus Christ, those who are unbelievers, those who may be word cursing, witchcraft cursing, any ill spoken right now, hold their tongue. Hold their tongue now in the name of Jesus Christ as we move forth. And this, they, we give you all the glory, Father. Jesus, we thank you for what you did on the cross. And Father, we thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. And so right now, anyone with anxieties, Father, right now, I take the sword of the Spirit and I cut them off right now. All anxieties come off, all fear, all confusion, anything of despair, anything that is called, causing nervousness, any anxieties anything that may cause respiratory or hearing or vision problems, anything that may hinder or block such as witchcraft, mind control, get your claws out of their minds right now. And I close all third eyes in the name yeah. of Jesus Christ. And because of that, Father, we now have the mind of Christ. And with this, we thank you and we praise you in Jesus name. Amen, amen, and amen. All right. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, Penny, again, thank you. Thank you. Pat. Now, um, the, we, we talked uh, on Wednesday and we went over some things, but what you want to do, of course, is uh, just let the Holy Spirit lead and, and go in different directions. But um, we want to know who you are and, and where you came from. Uh, okay. you, you know my wife and uh, you were associated with her many yes, years ago. Yes, I know your wife. <laughs> uh -huh. And, yeah. and so that's how we met. Well, I mean, that could be a whole other show. I mean, I, I, number one, I want to say that we're living in a 3D, just say like matrix. And I, I hesitate on saying that because, you know, all these people are worried about martial law being declared and all these things, but Martial law was already declared right after Christ died. <laughs> We've been in martial law since Jesus died and was resurrected. That's the, the truth. And there are many truths that I may not say on the show, but part of my testimony is to help people survive these times because these times are really difficult. I mean, they're extremely difficult and it's, it's a weakening of the spirit and I want to strengthen people and I want to say, you know, <laughs> I'm going off topic obviously, but, um, for my, for my, um, I have a hard time taking the right words or whatever, but um, I want people to be strengthened by prayer. This is not a time to be, um, this is not a time to be watching TV and on social media. This is a time where we are this is a serious time. This is these are serious times, and this is like 911 time. Okay, if I could ring an alarm bell, this would be the time I would ring an alarm bell. Yes. And I, I um, you know, my testimony is what it is. God saved me from sin, 
and I was reborn, and he saved me, and he loves me. And beyond that, I mean, just my testimony alone could take probably an hour or two hours to, you know, say, I went through this, I went through drugs, I went through, you know, being raped, I went through this, I went through all of those other things, but where I am now is that God is, you know, ringing the alarm bells, and we, we, we can't live under the Old Testament, okay, and I'm sorry that people are doing that, I really feel, really, you know, I know how you want to go to churches and do your deliverance ministry, but they won't have that. You know what I mean? Like, they won't let you go there because the pastor needs to be delivered. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, um, it's, it's, we're in a stage of time, and I'm going to say this, and this is going to blow people's minds, but most churches aren't preaching the truth, okay? We all know that. They don't want deliverance. They don't want, you know, evangelism. They don't want people being saved. So what do they want? You know what I mean? So why go to those churches? You know what I mean? I, I had a really... I haven't even gotten to my testimony, but I was ordained as a minister, and I went through this whole thing where I just, like, puked my guts out for years, and I, I, this is where I am, this is where I am, where the body of Christ is in a state of, I need Jesus, I need him, and I'm praying for him to help me, because these times are trying, and the church isn't helping me, um, my neighbors aren't helping me, it's just me. And that's where I am, and that's what I feel is going on right now. So, yes, what does that kind of well, you, kind of true? You I mean? absolutely. Now you lived in California, which really is almost like a third country now because it has nothing to do with what the original uh, states were like, and the the influences of Hollywood, uh, which you were involved with with Globe Before. Oh, my God. These, oh, right. Hollywood is, oh my God, my, 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 I, I mean, that could take a whole other show, my, my experience was in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Um, I went there at 22 years old. I was, you know, a bright eyed, my brother lived there. I went out there to be on a, a movie and I was a production assistant on a horror movie and I ended up moving there. And, you know, it's, it's the attraction. It's the Sodom and Gomorrah attraction. Like, hey, we got here. You could be famous. Like, there's gold out here. You know what I mean? That was the attraction that I felt when I was young. You know, hey, you could be famous. You could be this. You know, move out there. So from Virginia, I moved, you know, to L.A. And... Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, the things that I saw and the things that happened, mm, you know, it's a miracle. God, <laughs> it really is. I mean, oh, the, the parties I went to, the, oh, you know, in the, in the 90s, we were doing ecstasy and, you know, all kinds of things. But, um, you know, I wanted to see an actress. Basically, I wanted to be famous, you know, I was drawn to that. I, I heard the Piper's call, you know, like, hey, you could be famous, you know, like, come to Hollywood, you know. So, right now, I'm going to say to every parent, don't let your children move to L.A. Please don't do that. <laughs> um, but anyway, I did that, and it's part of my testimony, and I... I can't be ashamed of it. I'm glad it happened, but um, it really brought out the worst in me. Um, the, you know, wanting to be like, oh, I'm a star and all this thing, you know, like, you know, trying to follow 
listen, you cannot be a big star in God's eyes. I mean, you have to realize that. So anyway, I went for that, and I, you know, I met your wife, obviously, on the show Glow, and that was my first audition that I went on as an actress, and my brother um, told me to audition for Glow because he had been in Las Vegas, and he knew, he had seen the previous season of Glow, and he knew the the director or whatever, and he goes, Penny, you've got to audition for that. My brother was an actor and also and a director, and I was like, really? Like, I'm not even athletic or anything, you know, why should I do that? And so I went on the audition, and I made it, and it was probably the best thing that happened to me and the worst thing that happened to me at the same time. I don't know if that makes any sense, but... Um, I have to, I have to, I have to go back, further back into my childhood. Um, I was raised a Christian, and I wasn't always a Christian. And my parents, we were Presbyterian, and I gave my life really early, at, at a really early age, to Christ. And I always loved singing songs about Jesus, you know, as a child. And then all these other terrible things came into the picture. I was molested, I was raped, I was this, I was that, I got into drugs. At 13, I was already smoking pot. I was, you know, I was kind of following the wrong people, I guess. The, the, the fast girls in junior high school. I was suspended for drinking um, in junior high school, and things kind of, I was, had a really high IQ, I'm sorry, I, I stutter when I try to tell the truth, <laughs> um, but, but it, it, I'm, I'm stuttering because God always had my back the whole time, and my parents were horrified, and they were, you know, both involved in the church, and they were horrified of my my um, teenage years. I really embarrassed them, and then I decided that I was gay. <laughs> that was a whole other thing that really shocked them, and um, I went through that whole phase, and um, I don't even want to, I don't even know where to go from there because I carried that to California and had a, you know, life in California that was sex, drugs, rock and roll, basically. I was at a band, I, you know, I, I lived it up pretty much, but what rocked my world was when Jesus um, tapped on my shoulder, and he goes, you know what, I've been waiting for you. And that moment that that happened, it changed my life forever. And I'm going to say, I'm probably going to cry a lot during the show because Jesus is so brilliant. He is so brilliant. And we don't realize how brilliant he is. But he orchestrates everything in our lives. He orchestrates every single thing because he made us. He orchestrates everything. And he he drew me to a place where, you know, when I was younger, I was saying I would love to see what Jesus. I even carved on a toaster when I was in preschool. Jesus, you know, I love Jesus. I love to sing songs as a child about Jesus. And he is brilliant. And I would say to anybody out there, if you're, you know, doubting the plan that God has for your life, don't doubt it. 
he's brilliant. He's got it all figured out. And so, where am I going to go from there? I'm well, sorry, you, I'm you, made, you made a choice. Yeah. You, you know, you got the tap on the shoulder, but you were still at a I point. I got the tap on the shoulder. <laughs> right. I, you... Okay. Let me explain what debacle I was in. Okay. I was working at a BMW dealership in Monterey, California, in sales. And I was ruthless. I was just so you know, like callous, like money, 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 you know, blah, 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 blah. this was after Glow. I mean, after I did this stuff show, I, I was like, I need to make money, you know, it's me, 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 me. And um, my mom, well, my, my dad passed away. That had a big effect because that brings mortality into the, fo into the, into the focus. My, my father passed away, and I was like, oh my God, where am I going to go? Am I going to go to heaven or hell, you know? And then my mom was like, you know, Penny, I would really like to go to um, Israel. And I'm like, really? <laughs> so, and she goes, well, we have an annuity. It's enough to pay for the tickets to go there, and I want to see the Holy Land. And I go, okay, I'll go with you. So the whole time that I went with her, um, I knew what her plan was, but um, I got baptized in the Jordan River. River, I, I can't even talk right now. Um, her her plan was that she wanted to make sure that her children were saved. So she took me there, and the Jordan River part wasn't even on the tour, but out of this weird thing that happened, we went there. And they go, who wants to be baptized in the Jordan River? And all of a sudden, I was like, me, I want to be, you know, I want to, I want to, I want to do it. So when I did it, the guy came out that performed the baptism and he cried for about 30 minutes and we had to wear these gowns you know we get in the water I was crying and I could feel the Holy Spirit I could feel something was going on something amazing was happening to me and I couldn't understand it and I knew it was God and when I left there, I was not the same. That's all I got to say. And he prophesied over me. I didn't even know what, I didn't, at the time, I didn't even know what that was. Like when someone prophesied over you, I, you know, have no idea what. But when I got back to California, I was like, hmm, I don't even want to be here. This is, this is, this is bad. And I knew that that, that that was the turning point in my life. And he affected me so amazing. I mean, his spirit just like laid on me. And I just knew without a doubt that there was a God that loved me. And there was another point in that tour where we had to go where the actual... Um, where the cross was on Golgotha and you all these people would climb up this thing and go up these stairs and then there was a marble table and there was a hole and you would put your hand in this hole and that's where the cross was so I put my hand and this was before I was baptized but I put my hand in the hole and they go um, this is where the actual cross where Jesus was crucified so I put my hand in the hole, and I heard God say, this is real. And I, I was just like, I was just blown away. I mean, it, was, it wasn't like, like, what I, what I felt at that time was like, why did I have to go all the way to Israel to know that God was real? When he was in my heart the entire time when I was little. And he, 
he does uh, those things. He does those things in your life. I mean, he, he sneaks up on you, and that's how brilliant he is. And I, he just blows me away. I mean, that, I, I just have to say that. And I'm, I'm just going to get off that subject because I could talk about that whole tour forever. But Right. Um, well, from there, uh, when you return back to California, then your heart drew you towards, you know, closer to God. And the way the United States is set up that, uh, to do that, you go to churches. And so you were involved with TBN yeah, there in that I, area. Um, I ended up going. I ended up going to. Oh, well, I, I don't want to give it away. I went to a Word of Faith church. Oh, okay. Um, I went to a Word of Faith church in the Midwest. Okay. Um, and I went to a Word of Faith church in the Midwest. To a Bible school, and I that could be a whole other interview for another hour. Um, I sold all my belongings and I said, you know what, I'm going to go. And um, it was hard because I was like 42 at the time. And, you know, when you, I was washing dishes in my house and I felt God say, go to this, go to this Bible school, you know, go. And a couple of the church, the local church that I was going to, they said, we'll pay for you to go to this weekend where you can try it out and see if you like it. So I was like, oh, okay. And I was, I was really enamored by it. It was very, very, um, I don't, I don't know what to say. Like it was gigantic, you know, like mega church, you know, thing. And the praise and worship was awesome. You know, like I, I love praise and worship. I love to sing and I'm a singer. And but what else was going on there was the anointing. <laughs> I don't want to get into that because you have to have their anointing to be, you know, I mean that's uh, I, I, that's a whole other I don't want to offend anybody in the Word of Faith movement, but, you know, that's false. And this whole, <clears throat> like, um, you know, thing happened where I had to be there. And I gave my life there for, like, 10 years. And, you know, I sang on TBN, on TV, and, you know, thinking that I was, you know, doing all these things for God, and but also I was a personal assistant to the, the main pastor of the TBM pastors, and I saw like really bad things, and I can say that, you know, <laughs> it made me, uh, it made me like throw up for like days, and I, I basically went away from the church for like 10 years in seclusion after that experience. It was so traumatic that, you know, I, the, the attraction was this is church and we're worshiping and we're on TV and it's your faith and blah, blah, blah. But in reality, what I saw behind it was really horrifying, and it wasn't of God. And I don't want to, you know, hurt anybody's feelings that are watching those TV people, but don't give them your money. Please don't. Please don't. And I, I hope that you can... Um, find a replacement for your worship and not make it on TV. That's all I got to say is the people yeah. that are watching that. Well, I know that um, my personal experience with those that had direct uh, connections with TBN in Los Angeles and even on the East Coast, that there was a lot of adultery, there was even homosexuality, there was all kinds of... Um, uh, debauchery 
that was completely counter, that is counter to, to God. And so this obviously didn't uh, have anything to do with Christ. And, and it affects people when you find out, just as you said, you were traumatized with, by this. And it, it makes you I was, wonder. I was, I was like, well, okay, this is the worst thing, is that I was newly saved, and then I... I went to this Bible school, I sold all my belongings, and, you know, rented my heart, and ran to, to, you know, to do this thing, I was going to be a missionary in Africa, that was what I thought was my calling, and that's, it's not really, but I, I ran with all my heart, basically, and, you know, when you're 42, and you sell all your things, and you go and do that, that's a big deal. So I went there, and plus I, you know, I had to go to school and then have a part-time job on the side. Um, it was great. It was awesome for about five minutes, and then the reality set in. I was in a nightmare. And I was like, oh, my God, this is, you know, this is the devil. This is the king of the devil. What have I done? And so God always puts me in these positions where I can see the devil working. And, and I don't like it. It's uncomfortable. So I go there and I have an option. I can go to another church but go to Bible school. Okay. I right. prepaid the two years. So I went to this little tiny church, like way outside on the outskirts, and they were awesome. It was like a real church where people were, you know, like I got ordained at that church. And we were in there and we, you know, it's, you know, not a whole lot of financial, you know, whatever. And the snow fell off the building and broke part of the building off during a service. I mean, that's the kind of church it was. But they had a good food kitchen. They gave out food to the poor, blah, blah, blah. So I left that other place, but I have the certificate from that place. And I had to be a personal assistant to the main pastor of that thing for credit. And the things that I saw, the, the people that I, they all know each other, like Joyce Meyer, I mean, I, I don't know the name names, but they all, they all like know each other. They all go to Israel at the same time for some kind of weird thing that they do. And it took me, you know, like many, many years to A, forgive that, that thing that made me upset about fake miracle services and fake, you know, you know, just, oh, I, I can't even like describe the, the feelings that I had about fake miracle services. You know what I mean? Like Jesus would never <laughs> have a fake miracle service. He would never do that. I mean, he would just like heal somebody and that would be it. You know, it wouldn't be televised live on a, you know, this big thing. And oh, the other thing was is that, you know, as a Bible student, they they really weren't in, interested in making you be a minister. They were more interested in making you be a servant of their ministry. And they weren't, you know, they didn't want you to leave there. They wanted to enslave you so that you were just like free labor for them. And I did, I mean, I, I don't even, that could take, you know, two hours of what we had to do there. But it was, it was, a, it was a hard thing because there was so many people I knew, they would like worship God with all their heart and they were trapped in this nightmare. And the worst thing was is that as a Bible student, I rented a room with this lady um, who was a deacon, a deaconess at the church, and she didn't, she sowed a seed. 
she sowed a seed, you know what I mean? Like, they, you know, that whole thing. <laughs> the police came and her um, house was being repossessed. Yeah. So all of us had to leave. She didn't pay the rent for her mortgage payment for like three months because she gave all of the money to the church. And that happened to multiple people. It wasn't just her, but that sowing the seed financially type thing. Yeah, prosperity. Um, I don't know if that because I was like, where am I going to go? <laughs> I'm paying rent to her and she's not paying the mortgage, you know what I mean? But and she's a deaconess, you know, you know, high up in the church, you know, that, that religious authority that they have. Um, so anyway, I I got out of that whole religious mess. I just was like, ugh, what's so strong on? What what? But God wants that this to happen to be happening. No, no, this is not God. This is not God. And. I'm getting I'm getting lost in this word of faith thing because this word of faith thing could take hours to go through. Yeah. I mean, it really could. And so I I left I left offended. I was offended by the church. I was offended by people. I I just like flew away like a bird. And then God dealt with me. And he taught me about grace because the word of faith movement always used like the Old Testament to, to reel you in and you feel guilty about stuff and you're not kidding, you're not, you know, you're not, you're, gonna, you're going to hell every five minutes. That's what I felt like in the word of faith movement or Pentecostal, whatever you want to call it, non-denominational, whatever you want to say what it is, but. So after that, I kind of like jumped around to different churches, but I, I love to like spot churches. Like um, I went to this um, church that had a sheet drawn on the glass. It was like a shopping mall church, and it had a sheep on it, like a cartoon sheep. And so I went in there, and I was like, what's going on in here? And it was a prayer meeting. and I was like, oh, great, but it was all Spanish. And so, oh, I speak Spanish. I, I studied Spanish. So I went in there, and um, I had earrings on, so I was not allowed to, to pray at the altar. And <laughs> those kind of things, like, just, just drive me crazy. I mean, they just drive me crazy. So. I sat on this thing, like a, a chair in the past, the main pastor to my radio, so you have to leave because you're wearing earrings. And I went, really? And I said, okay, so I'm, I'm out of there. But I love to spot check these churches. I, I go to churches all the time. Not to join, but just to see what they're doing in there and to see if Jesus would be welcome. Mm -hmm. That's the main thing. You know, like, it just, it just, I don't, I can laugh now, but I used to cry. I mean, I used to cry because I wanted to serve the Lord with all my heart and go after him, but there's no church I can go to. There's no place I can go to. I'm isolated. There aren't churches. There's, there's ministries like yours, which are awesome. And you probably have the same feelings. And actually, I want to hear your feelings about that because I've been talking the whole time. Well, I, I'm very uh, boisterous about my feelings of the church. I will no longer enter a church. Uh, I will no longer go to the Bible studies represented by churches because those who have been put in charge do not have our best interest in mind. They are not, uh, you know, James 20, works without faith is dead. Now, that gets twisted, that gets interpreted in different ways. Our faith in Jesus Christ is what saves us, our belief in him. But as we move forward, it's the great commission of Jesus Christ to do those things that have been commanded 
that keeps us in, in a foundation of getting the word of knowledge, what to do next. And this has all been eliminated out of these churches. You know, you, you talk about prosperity, you talk about predestination, you, you, you talk about Calvinism. Uh, all of this stuff is a lie. It's to keep us from being who God intended us to be. And so what you've been running into is part of, of the, the, uh, the great deception, keeping us from being uh, what we're supposed to be doing. And you kept running into that. And But again, you, when, you, when you found out, you made a choice. So you didn't go back. But unfortunately, some people keep going back like a dog back to its vomit. And, and when we understand that you know, this world, we are to hate this world. We are in this world, but we're not to be of this world. And we're, we're to continue those things till the return of Jesus Christ. And when a church isn't doing that, when they're not setting the congregation free, when they're not healing them, when they're not binding up their broken heart, when, when the elders uh, aren't, aren't even standing in front of the church and calling up those who should be, you know, that are sick to be, to be healed, um, there's something wrong. Now, even a pastor, that's out of order. It should be a board of elders. When, when we look at uh, Ephesians, I think it is, uh, it's only mentioned once, pastor. And that's like number four in the, in the line of five. And then it's never mentioned again. And so it's not biblically sound. It's out of order. And, and you said about the Old Testament, by the way, that we're not under the law. The law has been fulfilled. We're, we're now in uh, a new um, agreement, a, a, a new covenant with Jesus Christ. And, and so the Old Testament, yeah. though it has history and it shows us what not to do, right? Uh, the failures of the past generations, uh, we're to look forward just as Paul. And, and people try and remove and, and discredit Paul's teachings when Paul's teachings speak to me more than ever uh, because of his ability to deal with the spirit realm, to, to understand what evil is and that we're called to, to expose it. And, and so it's, it's, um, it's been a hard road for, for all of us, uh, you know, as yourself, to experience when you walk into a church, you think that you're going to have a relationship uh, with Jesus Christ and God, and it turns out that that's not the case at all, and it's very heartbreaking. It turns out that it turns out that you just have to like be at home and be alone, <laughs> right. and and commune with God. I mean, that's I mean, I hate to say that, but I mean, the most of the churches I've been to. Are are corrupt. Right. I, I, I mean, yeah, sure. I, can I get can I get really real? I mean, we're in a satanic matrix. I mean, we're in a, it's like full time Disneyland. Everything is freaking Disneyland. If you could imagine that, and the church is no exception in that part of it. Yes. That's why I have to um, refer to it as the great. And this happened right after, right after Christ was resurrected. You know, this is um, the prince of the power of the air rules right now, and until Christ returns, we're subject of this. And so it's how we we move and and interact in this. That we're going to survive, and people don't realize this. They think that, you know, oh, I'm going to, you know, you know, whatever. But it's, it's or you're going to be mad at God because 9/11 happened or whatever. You, it's these things are happening. It was foretold what is going on right now. We were already foretold every single thing, but we just didn't see it. We just weren't able to comprehend it. But Jesus made it really clear. This is what's happening. This is what's going to happen. There's going to be a one world order. There's going to be a one monetary unit, whatever. 
it was already foretold. And it's our ability to accept our role with Jesus. What role are we going to accept with him? Are we going to be um, denying that all these things are happening? Are we going to be... Um, I, I, I'm sorry, I'm stuttering because I just stutter because he's so brilliant. Um, I'm just so happy that he saved me from my mess. And he, he's given me a, that I'm even alive today to, mm-hmm. to, to talk. And he's given us everything that we need to survive. Every single thing. Um, what's going to happen? Um, and we just have to trust him. And we have to have faith that he, I mean, he says he will give us wings like eagles. He's a healer. He still heals. He will um, you're in deliverance. Okay, I want to talk about this. The movie The Exorcist. Mm-hmm. My mother dragged me to that movie when I was in sixth grade. And only a Catholic priest could deliver a child from demons. Only a Catholic priest, which is a bunch of crap. Any Christian can do that. And that's what you do. Yes. And these are there's so many deceptions that are placed on us, it's like, that's what I said, it's Disneyland. I mean, how many, that's one of the, the, the main deceptions is that Christians don't realize that they have the power to cast out demons. They don't realize that they have powers in, in, endowed by the Holy Spirit. There's gifts, the word knowledge. They don't know that they have these things. And it's because of the enemy. And it's, it's a laziness on the fact that, you know, we don't try to pursue God as much, maybe. I'm just saying, you know. Well, you had mentioned how happy you were uh, that, uh, you know, that Jesus Christ saved you. And we're reminded by Christ that we are to rejoice in the fact that our name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life not to rejoice in the fact that we can cast out demons. Uh, that, that is one of the gifts that is given to us to, to help each other, meaning that when you're in bondage, uh, then someone else can come along and uh, take over when you're down, when you're emotionally broke, when, when your heart is broke, and they can, as a brethren, then stand in the gap uh, to, to enact the power of the Holy Spirit with Christ who lives in them to remove demons. And when a demon is removed, the very nature of what the demon is, such as if it's anxieties, if it's fear, if it's uh, even a, a curse, because that's how curses are done, is by the demons themselves. Well, there's even like the spirit of suicide. Sure. I mean, the spirit of suicide is so yes. huge. Yes. I mean, I absolutely believe that. I absolutely, and I've experienced the, um, at times, like the spirit of heaviness tries to come upon me. I'm like, wait a minute, no, you gotta go in the name of Jesus. You know what I mean? Like, there are there are there are spiritual wickedness that's operating against the body of Christ, and and so for people to be, you know, um, I don't I, I don't even have words for it, Scott. I really don't. I mean, we have all of the um tools at our hands, but we don't use all of them. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like we That's have right. he's given us everything that we need to survive and still we're suffering and we're we're sick and we're this and we're that and but he goes, No, this is all this is it. All these gifts, you know? It's like Christmas, all these gifts. You know? Once in a while I'll get a demon that manifests and actually laughs because Christians do not know who they are, and do not know the power they have. They even, they scoff because of the ignorance in the church. Now the, the church, 
uh, is not what we, you know, what we have today is really not the Church of Jesus Christ. And, and I say that because the, the, the whole um, um, persona of a, of a church is to keep people in control, to keep them in a bubble, to keep them away from what they've been called to do. And that's the truth, because if, if, the, if, the, if the churches, if the people in the church, let's say we have one church that all the congregation was delivered of their curses, of, the, of their sicknesses, of their, of their mental illnesses, and, and all of the issues of fear, if those were removed, that single church would be so powerful that in itself could do such incredible miracles in this country that whole counties, whole cities, whole states, uh, that the principalities, the rulers would flee, absolutely flee. But because we do not know who we exactly, are. Exactly, exactly. Right. So um, um, as we end up, we're, we're coming to the end here. I, I you on that. Right. Is there, as we finish out here for the hour, um, would you like to, to close with something? Yeah, I want to talk about, um, you know, I haven't mentioned any scriptures, but mm -hmm. I wanted to talk about my favorite scripture that kind of personifies my life. And I'm going to read it. Um, it's First Corinthians 14. It says, love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. And what that 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 is talking about is God's love. Right. It's not talking about Heath's love. It's talking about God's love towards us. And we have to remember that God loves us. He loves us so much that he sent his son to die for us, to pay for our sins because we're sinners. We're a corrupt human flesh sack. And Jesus came and he died and he rose again from the dead. And he he lives in heaven and he died for our sins. And for that, I am forever grateful. Um, we can't comprehend eternity. We really can't. We can comprehend, you know, living 70 years on this earth and you know, going to Safeway and buying groceries and things like that, but we can't comprehend the eternity with him. But he messed up. He showed me a glimmer of his face. I saw a side. No man can see his face. But I saw a side of it, a glimmer of it. And he is beautiful. He, he radiates like the sun, just like they say. But he knocks up when he showed me this face because I cannot stop thinking about that face. I cannot stop thinking about wanting to be with him. And I can't stop wanting other people to want to be with him because this place is, you know, we can't understand. God. We can't understand what he's doing. Our, our minds can't wrap around God's will. But we can submit as a as a as a creature or the daughter or son of God and say, Okay, I understand that you're you're really awesome and I'm going to I'm going to believe you. And so that's that's what I would I would prefer everybody listening <laughs> to do because the other end of it of hell is not really great. And eternity is awesome. <laughs> it really is. Yes. And so I hope to pursue that end of it. And if you I mean, I've been through the gamut. I've been through, I had the choice of being, you know, oh, I could do this or that. But, you know, out of all the things in my life, the most beautiful thing is the day that, that he, he touched my heart. He blew my mind away. He overwhelmed me with his presence. It's so beautiful. But ask anyone who's not wanting to make that decision, just just ask God. Just ask God to show you who he is. He will show 
brother, you know, he will go, you know, he will come, he will, his presence will come to you. And I'm so happy that I had this. I mean, despite any hardships I've had in my life, the most beautiful aspect of it is Tim. And I just want to make sure that people know that he, he's real. He really is real. And if you have any doubt, just ask him to come into your life, and he will. And you notice how simple that is, but religion makes it complicated. And that is... Uh, religion? Oh, my God. Like that's a whole other... I mean, we could talk for hours on that. Okay, I want to talk about the thief on the cross. When Jesus was on the cross with the two the two people, uh, other people on the cross, and there were three crosses, okay? There was the thief and then the other whatever that person was. All right. Jesus said, if you believe in me right now, you will be in paradise. Okay. That guy believed, and there he went. God says, if you believe in your heart that I am Lord, you are saved. Okay. There are no other things we have to do. Nothing. You could do nothing for the rest of your life. But... What happens is he puts a passion in your heart to do things to please him. That's the thing. You don't have to do anything. It, it, you were not saved by, by, you're saved by faith, by grace. Your faith saves you. You were not saved by works. I'm sorry. To say that, but that's true. Yeah, there's actually okay. a, over a hundred verses from Ephesians two to all the way to Isaiah forty three that state that. So it is ab absolutely scriptural. Okay, so, uh -huh. so why do people want to do things for the Lord? Why do people want to do things for the Lord? Because he comes inside of you, and he makes you want want to communicate with other people. Like he makes you want to smile to somebody else. He wants you to help other people find him. And that's what happens. You're not, you don't have to do anything. You, it, it, he puts a passion in your heart. He puts the fire in your heart to make other people not want to experience what you went through. And so he, he's the one that saves people. He is the savior, not us. It doesn't matter how many um, church services you go to where all these people are saved. He is the savior. He is the one he chooses. He selects his chosen ones, his sheep. The sheep know his name. He calls them. What we do is we love people. We're commanded to love people. The Ten Commandments are out, all right? The last commandments are love God with all your heart, all your mind, and love one another. It's so simple. We don't have to do anything. We don't, you, you don't even have to go to church. You, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to do anything. You just have to love people. I mean, you don't even have to love people if you don't want to. I will just say that. But he puts the passion in your heart. Like once, once the Holy Spirit comes inside of you, you cannot help but love other people. You cannot help but love what he's done for you. Absolutely. Well, well let's, uh, let's, try and set up another scheduled time to continue and um, and I thank you for being on tonight. Can I uh, end this out in prayer for you? Thank you, Scott. Absolutely.